So here's a question. What, for you, defines a fine art photograph? There are lots of opinions out there. For me, I think the key thing is intentionality. So that you begin with an idea, a concept, something that you specifically want to create and you know in advance what this should look like. Uh, when a painter sets out to create a painting, they have that intention. They know what this, the subject matter is going to be. They know how they're going to end up, which is different, I think, from going out saying, well, I'm going to take a photograph of a specific waterfall or a specific building. Um, I think to, to move it into the, the realms of fine art, you're going to create something with that. You're going to make that subject look a particular way. So why not join me in this video? and see how I've gone about creating a fine art photograph. To create the fine art image I have in mind, there are two key elements which I need. Uh, one of these is a sculpture, the other is wet sand. And wet sand that's the reason I'm here, on the beach, at low tide. Okay, well this is, I think, what I'm looking for, right here. Nice and wet, and wet enough to be reflective. Um, no footprints in it, fairly pristine, so this is where we'll take the first shot. Okay, so I think we've got the, the first shot in the bag. Uh, I'm using my Sigma 50mm Prime lens today really for the, the purpose of consistency. Uh, I don't want to be zooming. I want to have as much consistency between the first shot and the second shot as possible just to make life a bit easier when we come to do the blend in Photoshop. So uh, we'll try and keep the camera settings the same when we go for the second shot. Uh, but for the moment, I think that's the first one in the back, unless on the way back I see another piece of wet sand that's actually going to be any better than what I've got, in which case I'll grab it. Otherwise, it's back to the car and on to the second location. Okay, back at the car. Put the camera back in. I'll change out of the wellies. Back into the trainers. Before we head off inland for the next shot which is um, a sculpture which I want to get uh, a shot of. So I've taken a note of where the sun was relative to me, relative to the subject on uh, of the beach. Uh, we'll try if we can to replicate that uh, at the sculpture. I'll also try to use pretty much the same camera settings that I used on the beach here, try to keep everything consistent. Of course it probably, <laughs> probably won't be possible, so what I might end up doing is retaining the uh, aperture and shutter speed and go to auto ISO and allow the camera to select, but we'll see what the conditions are when we get there. But in the meantime, change of footwear before we head off inland. Well here we are. Ready for location two. Uh, now I can I can remember roughly where the sculpture is, but it's uh, a wee bit of a walk uh, through woodland paths uh, to a kind of higher elevated area. So hopefully I'll find it without too much bother. Otherwise, it's a nice walk. I'm hoping I'm on the right route. 
It feels familiar. Well, in the end, I've skirted round the bottom and we're going uphill here now. This is round the other side. This, I am confident, will lead me to where I want to be. So, up the rise ahead, round the corner. I think we should reach our objective. So I'm really pleased actually, we found the sculpture without too much effort, um, got the shot done of that. Uh, the lighting of course is different now, up here the sun's come out much more strongly, um, so I've got very distinct shadows, um, the exposure obviously had to change, so rather than mess about with the depth of field I kept the f-stop the same, changed the ISO, brought that down to ISO 100, I think I was on 200 before and uh, pushed up the shutter speed till we, we got the correct exposure and I'm, I was spot metering on the sculpture itself uh, because that's the thing I need to be uh, properly exposed not the background here, not interested in that at all but the one thing I have noticed um, in being here is the sun is on my right to my right as I've taken the shot on the beach it was from the left so once I get into Photoshop, I have to make a mental note to remember to flip this image around so that the shadows fall uh, consistently from what, uh, what would be the reality at the beach. The beach sets the context, uh, so we need to make this match the context. So there we go. Um, I think that's the shoot effectively done. So the next job is to uh, get back to get back to base, get the shots into Lightroom and Photoshop and uh, build our fine art image from there. Well with coffee in hand uh, it's time now to get into the editing phase of building the fine art image. So without further ado let's pop into Lightroom and then Photoshop and uh, see how we do it. Well, I've imported uh, the images into Lightroom and these are in the library module at the moment in the grid format. What I'm going to do is quickly go through them. Uh, we'll just enlarge them, hit the space bar to enlarge and I'll go through and basically these are just at exactly as they've come out the camera. So I'm going to go through, give them a, a, a star rating um, and uh, we'll end up choosing one uh, of each which I'm going to really proceed with into Photoshop. So that's the first one. For some reason it's given itself four stars. <laughs> Fair enough. I quite like that. I like that there's a bit of sky, the horizon's high. I'll maybe give that... Uh, Maybe give that five stars. Yeah. Let's move along to number two. That's got more sky, but the horizon would need to be would need to be adjusted. So now let's go back, make that one four. That one four. These are two contenders. That one's a bit dark, but we can adjust the exposure. Looking at the sand. Uh, not so sure that one give that a four that's a possibility that one i think less so that one i think too much sky i think the sand is too rippled so yeah i'm essentially coming back to here so it's one of these I think possibly 
that one, the first one. <clears throat> I think I'll go with five for the first one. So let's jump forward to the sculpture and have a look through these. Here I'm mainly concerned about how the exposure is and the composition. Yeah, I think the latter ones are looking better. I think the fact that it's a bit yeah, a bit darker. That's better exposed. I think I'm just going to give that one a five and be done with it. That's the one that we'll go for. So it's going to be this one and this one. How curious it's the first and the last in the whole series. So there we go. Um, let's go into the develop module. Press D on the keyboard. And the first thing in my normal work pattern is to enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. It's identified the lens which I used, which is excellent. We'll now just, because I'm fussy about horizons, let's click level that. Has that done it? Let's look at, uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, good. So what I'll do now, looking at the, the histogram here, um, we've maybe not got as wide a spread as we could have. So what I'm going to do is take the um, the whites and we'll raise those. And what I'm looking for here now is this little triangle up here. I want to get to the point where that just begins to, to clip There it's gone blue, so there, and then we'll take the blacks down, and again it's this one, shadow clipping that I'm looking for, turning there. So let's have a look at before and after. That has given it more vibrancy. I'm certainly happy with that, that's looking good. The overall exposure, the, the histogram is pretty decent. I'll maybe just bring the highlights down a little bit so that we get a wee touch more detail in the sky. And what we might also do if I come to the masking tool and we'll do a linear gradient and well, place the cursor middle top. If I press and hold the shift key while I do this, it will keep it nice and level. So let's bring that down to about there. Let go of the mouse, let go with the shift key. Switch off the highlighting and what I want to do now is just bring the exposure down slightly just to bring a wee bit more into the sky. Take the highlights down a touch further on that. And that I think I am happy with. So we'll close that. Okay, and quick look at before and after. Yep, I think that is looking, that's looking better. So this is really going to set the, the context into which we'll place um, the sculpture in such a way that it... Um, just appears to be naturally there, as it were, uh, or intentionally there, by way of creating our fine art image overall. Now, is there anything else I want to do with this? Um, tell you what we'll do, we'll go back to basic and we'll just add a little bit more vibrance, take that up to about 18, 19 and maybe just boost up the saturation slightly yeah light touch four or five yeah thereabouts i think that's good before and after check yeah i'm happy with that so that's good so we'll leave that as is and then we'll jump to number 15. And again here, lens corrections will enable the lens corrections and remove chromatic aberration. Um, 
Oh, it's identified the wrong lens. There we are, Sigma. Get it right. Okay, so on this, I'm fairly, fairly happy with that. Let's just boost, punch in a little bit. Yep. Yep. Yep, fairly happy with that. Okay. And how's the histogram looking? We're maybe a bit heavy on the blacks. Should I reduce that slightly? Yeah, let's just take it out so it's not clipping. And the whites, yeah, back to so that it's not clipping. That's it just there. So that's pretty good. Do we need any more vibrance in that? Um, and we'll make that round about, round about the 10, 11 mark. That's fine. Good. Before I finish here, let's go on to the detail. Have a bit of a look at sharpening. There's a, already an amount of sharpening in there. So what I can do, if I come to the masking, uh, press and hold the Alt key on the keyboard and then click and drag this along. What shows up in white is what will be sharpened. And I really want the edges of the sculpture to be uh, fairly sharp. We'll take the radius down and let's give it maybe about 50. And in terms of luminance, just a wee bit of noise reduction on that. There really isn't much there to begin with. So quite happy with how that's looking. One last thing to do uh, with this image, of course, uh, which I'm now remembering, is to flip it because the sun if I remember, was coming from the wrong side. So we just go to Photo, Flip Horizontal, and there we go. So now we're ready to take that one and press and hold the Control key, that one. Uh, we'll take them into Lightroom. So if I right click and edit in Photoshop, then there we go. So here we have both of the images have been brought over into Photoshop on this tab here. We've got the Celtic Knot sculpture and on this tab we have the beach scene. So what I want eventually is that uh, both images are in the same tab as separate layers. Uh, before I do that though, what I want to do on this one is to select and mask so that we only have the sculpture itself. Now, if I was to take you through that, it would make this video far too long and uh, that's not the aim of the game here. The aim of the game is to show you the, the kind of creative process in a, in a fine art image. Um, there are lots of videos out there if you want to know and learn how to select and mask. This is going to take me a little bit of time, so I will crack on and do that and we'll pick up once that particular job is done. Okay, there we are then, that's um, the masking done. You can see here on layer one, I've got a layer mask done. If I switch off the background, there we can see um, selection made, masking done. It, it was a bit of a job uh, getting that fairly neat. Um, it's, I think, as good as I'm going to get it. So I'm fairly, fairly happy with that. So what I now want to do is get this layer, layer one with the mask on it, into uh, this tab here that has the beach on it. So we'll go back to there. We'll click on layer one, right click on it, duplicate layer, and the destination will be 1833 as indicated there. Say OK. Now if I go over to here, there we have, it's imported as a new layer. And um, you can see, you can begin to see now uh, the idea coming together of how I'm putting this sculpture into the beach setting, but it's by no means 
by no means finished. What we need to do is my intention is to use this area here as a kind of reflection. So we're going to have to start losing uh, bits of this, but I also want to make sure that I've got this in a position that I'm happy with. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere on this water here is where this junction should lie. So what I'm going to do, make sure that layer one is selected. Uh, take the move tool and we'll just, just pop that into, into there. Good. So now what we're going to have to do is work basically on the mask layer. So again, select layer one, but make sure that we click on the mask that that's highlighted. And then we're going to start to lose um, this down here. Now to begin with, I'll just lose that completely. Um, but then we want to be a bit more delicate when we get into this area. Uh, I'll use I'll adjust the, the, the flow, I'll adjust the opacity uh, and so on as we as we get to start to refine this. But to begin with, what we'll do is um, select a brush. Um, now the opacity is down, let's take that up to 100 and make sure we're on black here. And that will start to delete and uh, the brush could do with being a bit bigger so let's just use the right hand bracket to bring that up and then we'll just begin to take that out there And now this is where we want to start to get a little bit cute. So I'm going to take uh, the opacity down to maybe about 60 and just work in there a little bit. Uh, we'll take the flow down as well, maybe about 37. Just steadily, carefully working away there so that that starts to look like it's just reflecting a bit in the water. There we are, fairly subtle. But I think that largely does the job. There's enough of a, a hint there. If I zoom this in, you can see, um, let's just go to the move tool in case I do anything wrong here. But you can see in there, there's the the hint of the, the reflection, which is what I was hoping to achieve. So that I think is looking not too bad. Well, at this point in the process, I proceeded to do work, which in the end I really wasn't happy with. Um, so to save you um, the trial of having to sit through all of that, we're just going to jump towards the, the latter part of the editing process. I think what we do need, though, is a shadow. Um, let's make sure I'm clicked on the background and a shadow. If you, the sun's been coming from this direction, so the shadow needs to fall broadly that way to follow it. So to create the shadow, what I'm going to do is um, choose a brush. I want a colour that's going to blend in. So if I click on this... Uh, Actually, let's use the eyedropper. Where are we there? Let's pick just there. And my brush, I want it to be soft. Yeah, so yeah, maybe around about 13% is fine. 
300 pixels, that's okay at the moment. Opacity 10%, flow 25. So we're going to build this just, just carefully. So we're going to come from there and it would kind of fall that way. Now what I'll do is we'll take this up to about 21% and just build in a little bit more. It's got to be, got to be subtle here. The shadow diminishes the further away it goes. So a little bit more in there. I think that is probably subtle enough to just imply shadow there. How does it look if we take the text off? Yeah. Oh, I'm torn. Text on, text off. I think I might go without the text actually. Having done it, yeah, I think I, I'll take that off. So, a little bit of wasted effort, but hey, that's how it goes when you're when you're creating something. So that I think will be the, the final image. Let's do file and save. And what that will do when it's finished saving here is pop a copy back into Lightroom because that's where we came from. And if I go back to Lightroom, there we are. So all I need to do now is export that and that is job done. So there's how we've created a fine art image from concept through to delivery. Bless you for sticking it to the end. I hope uh, that's been uh, informative. I hope it's been helpful, maybe inspiring. Uh, maybe you'll go off and create your own fine art images and play around with what you might define for yourself as fine art. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, if it has been of benefit to you, do remember to give it a thumbs up, uh, like it, uh, subscribe. And if you subscribe, please do consider turning on notifications so that you'll be advised anytime I upload future content. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.